imagine you get a client asking you to certify this portal frame shed. This client is a fabricator and he gives you drawings of exactly how he wants the shed to be. As an engineer, your job is to analyze and design the structure and make sure what he's proposing is safe. So today's video is the first part of a series of videos where we're gonna do an overview of how you can analyze a steel frame shed. The idea of this series is to look at the layout, make sure the structure is stable and maybe optimize the members without changing much the architectural intent. I'm gonna use Autodesk Robot but you can follow along with any software you have available the results should be the same so let's get into it this is the shed we're going to analyze it's a quite simple structure made of cold formed steel so the columns and rafters are RHS rectangular hollow sections connected by four bolts and plate at the apex which is this highest point here and at the eaves the roof burlings are light gauge Z sections while the girts are C sections and they are connected by two bolts and a plate. The roof cross bracing is a round bar with turnbuckle to tension the rods and they are connected with one bolt and a plate. If we go to the inside there are two mezzanines and the main beam of the mezzanine is a PFC parallel flange channel supported by an SHS column with light gauge C section joists and they are connected by two bolts and a plate. Most of the portal frames they are propped by a middle column except this one here which doesn't have a middle column to support the rafters. The base plate for the columns are simple connection with two bolts and a plate and we can notice that the walls don't have wall bracings and we might also have to introduce some roof struts here that we're going to discuss later. In this first video we're going to model the structure as it is and then we're going to discuss what we need to make the whole system stable. So let's get started by drawing the column, select the bar tool and then this column is going to be 5.2 meters high. So you can insert the columns by inputting node coordinates so just change the Z coordinate to 5.2 meters. That's it, close. And the distance between column is 4.8 meters, 6 meters and 3.85 meters. Okay. So the shortcut for copy is out EEM. And we're going to copy that column in the X axis 4.8 meters and then 6 meters and then 3.85 meters. I'm gonna... Now the, the portal frame spans 10 meters, so copy and paste those columns 10 meters to the y-axis, negative y-axis, so that's minus 10. And to draw the rafters, I'm gonna draw a frame here so I can, so I know which points I'm gonna draw the rafter. So the apex height is six meters. So I'm gonna draw a bar from the middle of that beam and then I'll draw the rafters. It's just so you have a reference, okay? Then I can delete these bars. Okay, now copy the raft that we're gonna copy the rafters to the other base, so three times. Now if we look at the 3D, let's just make it a bit lighter here so it's easy to see. Notice that we have rafters, roof bracing, sorry, going from the first bay to the last one. So let's draw these roof bracings in the software here. So Go to bars and then from the eaves to the apex, eaves to the apex, and then draw all these cross bracings. Now select all these bars, go to sections, and then if you don't have a section here, we need to go to new sections, and then we're going to make then RB, which stands for round bar. 
and then let's make a 16 millimeters add and apply And then now we go to geometry, additional attributes, and then advanced bar properties and make all these cross bracings tension only members because the rods can only take tension. Okay, cool. I forgot the last bay here. So the same thing, select them all, go to geometry at the top, and then additional attributes, advanced bar properties. Just select tension bars and apply. So to model the middle column, select the middle column and copy it four meters to the center. That column is going to support the rafters. Now to extend this column, we're just going to use the extend tool. So edit and then extend. Select the rafter in the first box and the column in the second box. Now select them, the rafter and the column, go to Alt E and then click intersect. It's going to make the column connect to the rafter. I'm going to do the same process to the other column. Copy four meters to the Y axis. That's it. And then copy this same column, 3.35 meters to the X axis, negative X axis. Those two columns, they will support the mezzanines. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this node 2.6 meters lower. So Z 2.6. And I'll do the same to the other column. Just select the node. Because those columns will support only the mezzanine. They're not there to support the rafters. Now copy the third column of the portal frame, same distance, 4 meters, and this column we're going to copy 2.1 meters to the center. Now with the dimension tool I'm just going to measure this last bay. So we know what is the dimension and then copy this column here 4.8 meters to the X axis. That's it. Now select all the portal frame columns and then go to sections. Go to new section and let's make them RHS, rectangular hollow sections, 150 by 100 by 4. That's the one. Click add, close, and then apply. Now right click, go to display, mark with colors and then sections legend by colors and that's going to change the colors of each section which it makes easier to identify each column. So notice that the columns they are not in the right direction so select all the columns and then we're going to have to rotate them so that the major axes are aligned with the Y axis and we do that by changing the gamma to 90 degrees. That's it. So let's zoom in and looks good. It, we just rotated the columns. Now the major axis is aligned with the rafters. It's looking good. Now we're gonna do we're gonna change the section of the rafters now. Okay, so let's select all the rafters. So like one by one, go to section, new section, RHS, RHS, and then we're going to change them to 200 by 100 by 4. Apply, cool. The middle columns will be 100 by 100 by 4 SHS. So 
let's select all the middle columns go to sections new sections and then change to square hollow sections then 100 by 100 by 4 and close and apply and those mezzanine columns they will be 75 by 4 SHS we already have the section here so just select them and apply now we're gonna extend the middle columns up to the rafters so let's go out EE extend so select the rafters for the first one and the second one is the column first box is the rafters and second box is the member to be extended which is the column so that for the last column select the column extend now it's looking good now what we're gonna do we're gonna model the the beams for the mezzanine okay so just go to bars and draw a beam from the top of that column to the top of this column then we draw another beam from that column to the middle column wait until you see the 90 degrees snap that's it go there again and then the perpendicular snap that's it and let's make these beams 200 pfc so let's change the section we don't have it here so let's make a new section go to parallel flange channel and choose 200 pfc add apply and close now select them and let's copy them over to the external columns copy from this one snap to the middle now select the columns and the beams and we go to out ee and intersect they're gonna that's gonna ensure the columns are connected to the beams let's just copy this column over here to support the mezzanine that looks good now we're gonna do is do the supports so select all the nodes at the base of the columns go to supports and let's make them pin supports that's it um, we forgot to model the second mezzanine so there's also another mezzanine on the other side so let's just draw a bar here so that bar is a 200 pfc and then copy the 200 pfc over to this column now if we have a look at the 3d again let's find out where we can install wall bracings okay, so on this side we have a door here we have two windows here one here one here then we have another window here so the only space left to draw the bracings to install bracings is in this space here so what we're going to do we're going to draw a cross bracing from here from the bottom of this pink column to the middle of this green column and then from the bottom of the green column to the top of this pink column and then we draw a diagonal bracing that goes from the top of the pink column to the top of the green column we can't have a cross here because there's no column in this side okay so this blue this blue member here is just a bridging to support the guards so it doesn't have enough rigidity to connect another bracing here so we only do one bracing diagonal here and that bracing obviously will have to take compression and tension on the other side we have a big door here have another big door here 
a little door here and we have two windows here so what we can do is I think the easiest solution here is run a bracing from the bottom of this column in between the windows here to the top of this green column and then we run another one crossing here in between the windows so it's just one here and one here by the way if you're interested in learning more about engineering there's a bunch of books recommendation in the description of the video so I'm not advertising anything I do get a very little commission from Amazon if you purchase from the links below which obviously helps the channel but I genuinely use these books so I'm sure you will benefit from them as well so let's jump back to robot and model these bracings okay so go to bars then one bracing here another bracing here and another one here as we discussed now select the cross bracings change them to round bars and geometry additional attributes oops additional attributes and then advanced bar properties tension bars close and then to the other side just go to bars and then we're gonna draw the that long cross brace and go from the bottom to the top of the column bottom to the top of the column select them all make them round bars 16 millimeters and then again tension only members now to make this system work let's draw the roof struts so go from one eave to the other eave then to the other eaves now let's let's select all the roof struts and then just out e e m and copy them over to the apex and from the apex to the eaves And that's it. Uh, we, we will stop here for today and continue the modeling in the next video. Nowadays we have a quite short attention span, so I'm gonna try to keep this video shorter than 20 minutes. So chill out a bit and I'll see you in part two. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to help to grow the channel. And I'll see you next time.